Yeah. Palm Springs, Palm Springs is one of the last places I went before COVID. Oh, really? Yeah. You visited me. <laughs> <laughs> did well, it? No, next time. Next time. I want to congratulate you on Mophie. It's a heartfelt and eye-opening film about exploring identity amidst toxic masculinity, homophobia, racism, and the whole shebang. Thank you so much. No, it's, it's definitely the, the full cart of fun things. Right. Well, at the hands of a lesser skilled director, uh, Mr. Oliver, Mofi could have turned into a gay man in the military lampoon, you know. But what we got is much more powerful. Give us a genesis of how Mofi came about. What got you interested in writing and directing it? Uh, I was actually, the book, the film was a book before, and I was offered the book. Uh, the producers came and asked if I was interested. Um, and in the beginning, I actually wasn't interested. I wasn't sure I wanted to make a movie about the military. Um, and eventually I, I saw the reason for not doing it as the reason to do it. Um, and writing took me, and the, my writing partner was one of the producers. It took us about a year, a year and a half. Um, and we, we did it very slowly. Like we were writing and then we were slowly casting. And Morphe was one of those wonderful experiences where we seem to have had a lot of time to do every part of the process quite comfortably. What kind of research did you do? I heard that you talked to some of the soldiers who experienced uh, that part of the movie, right? Uh, and yeah, we, when you make a movie about the recent past, you know, you know that people live through it. So you're very conscious that when people see the film, they're going to know if something was accurate or inaccurate. So we did a lot of research. Um, the internet is an amazing tool for that visual research and people had forums that we were kind of reading and it became it became a kind of addiction for myself and, and the producers to just gain as much knowledge as we could. Uh, and I think many of the scenes in the finished film that we added are, are people's personal experiences. Um, talk to us about the word Mofi. I mean, it's meant to degrade and dehumanize folks, right? It's, make, it's meant to make you shameful and shame is at the heart of the film. Am I correct? Absolutely. The, the word is definitely a weapon of shame and it's used to, to, to diminish people, to diminish young men, young boys, even grown men. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's there to kind of uh, measure their masculinity and, and in a way, of course, also to suggest uh, something about their sexuality, a negative slot to their sexuality. You know, Mr. Oliver, just a little side note here. You know, in the Philippines, we have a word that is similar to Mofi. It's called bakla, you know, but but the LGBTQ community there turned the word on its head. And it's now, I've been hearing, it's now almost a term of endearment, which is, you know, hooray. I mean, this film, your Mofi, um, got me thinking about words and how they hurt sometimes. And, and a lot of this is happening in South Africa as well. Um, a lot of the LGBTQA plus community in South Africa have taken the word Morphe and, and made it their own. And, and so it does exist in, in that community uh, as, as a term of endearment, but you know, it still gets used in the everyday as a, as a weapon of shame. So it, it's, I, I personally don't like to use the word Morphe. I, 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 I would never use it in, in, in my day-to-day -day life. So it's kind of yeah. interesting that I made a form and I actually end up saying that word many more times than I ever thought I would. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's the title of your film. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of hard to avoid it. Um, you know, it's kind of very similar to the F word here in America. You know, in the English Absolutely. language. Um, in, in a way, um, here are a bunch of young men being trained to learn toxic masculinity and its evil brothers, right? Homophobia, racism. One of those heartbreaking moments for me, one of those heartbreaking scenes is the train station scene where the would-be soldiers are abusing a black man who's simply waiting for a train. And that's also a moment from, from reality. We, we read about it um, and it was, yeah, it's definitely a scene to demonstrate like what South Africa was like in 1981 and what life was like for, for black people um, and really limiting myself to having just one scene that tells you the story of uh, the powerlessness of black people at the time uh, and definitely a scene that was never ever fun to consider shooting it was kind of a strange scene to shoot actually because it, it felt very real very quickly yeah and there yet it's so quiet I mean you didn't you didn't hit us over the head with it you know and I love those scenes um one another one of those is um that I thought was heartbreaking was the pool scene with a young Nicholas I mean that explains a lot don't you think Absolutely. It was also just wanting to like, you know, uh, have one key moment that tells the story of his relationship with shame and his 
genesis with the with the with the word morphe um, and even to the point where we wanted that scene to be a real-time experience for the audience so that it unfolds without any editing because it, it needs to kind of have that impact um, there's a lot about morphe that was all about restraint it was just about kind of pulling it back constantly and making it as kind of um, taut as possible and in the middle of all this toxic masculinity is a queer, is a queer love story that is so innocent and pure and heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. <laughs> I was like, ah, <laughs> I love that. Um, how did you balance that, Mr. Oliver? Uh, yeah, that's a tough one because, um, you know, we, we, we don't have any sex scenes. It was all about kind of making that as as restrained as possible as well. And you know, the, 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 most, the most sexual moment between the two of them is that one touching the other's face and, and like a kiss. Um, and it was about the, the, the essence of that relationship, I think is like, an, like a, I always saw it as like a flower opening, like he becomes aware of himself. Um, and that was kind of what I focused on. And the trick I would say that I used in the end was just a bit of opera <laughs> that gave that moment its kind of finesse. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're blessed uh, with uh, Mr. Kai. I mean, he's a great actor. I mean, he was able to convey emotions without uttering a single word. And I, I told him that when I talked to him. Uh, he didn't have any lines of dialogue. Yeah, he was very restricted. Um, and but he, he did. You're right. He 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 embodied that that character's journey very much uh, through his expression, which was which was quite extraordinary to watch. So Mofi is opening in select theaters and on demand in, uh, on um, the eighth, right? Or yeah, Nine. on the ninth. Um, what do you hope for viewers to get after watching the film? Good question. Uh, it'll it'll change from viewer to viewer, but I guess the sort of the central hope is that uh, it it makes us kind of aware of 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 how men are built, I guess, not just white men, but men in general, like how society is kind of bold men and how we, we, we're challenging this notion at the moment globally. And I guess Morphe is part of that conversation. Keep on challenging that notion, Mr. Oliver. And I'm right there with you. A big congrats on Morphe again. It's a redemptive story about finding your truth. And I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Good luck on everything, okay? Bye, Manny.